I'm going to hit this button here, uh, and then I think, um, um, I don't know what, this is not something I've done before. So let's see, in, in a second we should see this, this appear here. Yeah, that looks promising. Okay. All right. All right, let me just ask now if uh, people in the live chat can hear me. And then I'm going to, um, um, then I'm going to close this. Uh, yeah, the, this is going to go on forever. Uh, all right, all right. Hi, 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 hi. Hi, hi, hi. I just want someone to say the sound works. Okay, okay. So I'm, I'm going to close this. So, so f from this moment on, my focus is now on you, the, the, um, the, the people who are physically here in this room. I just wanted to turn that on. And so I don't know if anybody, if there's, if anybody uh, is, has the live stream like in the background on their machine and there's some like really in important question or well, tons of people saying like it stopped, um, you could let me know, but I'm going to not pay attention because this is a rare and unique opportunity to be physically with people in real life. Um, so, uh, oh, so hello, welcome. I guess it's a few minutes early, but I, Matt, I, we might as well start. <laughs> My name is uh, Dan Schiffman. Thank you so much to Grow Paris and Le Tank um, for having me here. This is like a real honor to get to be able to be here in Paris um, and do a workshop um, and meet people who I have corresponded with online or maybe met before. Um, and um, yeah, so I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. Um, so I, most people are probably familiar with me somewhat because that's probably how you found out about this. Um, but in case, just, just as a matter of quick introduction, um, I, what I do actually full time um, is teach at a program in New York called ITP. I'll just pull up the website real quick. Um, this is a two year graduate program at Tisch School of the Arts. Um, and actually, that's why I'm here in France. Is the NYU has a study abroad program at NYU Paris, and I'm visiting that for um, most of this week. Um, and so in addition to this, I have this YouTube channel where I make coding tutorials. That's m where most people find me. Yeah? Oh, they can't see my face? Oh, because if I go like this. Ah, all right. So sorry to the live viewers. Uh, I, this, this is just the webcam. I'm going to be moving around a lot, but I'll give you a moment of looking at you. But otherwise, it's going to be it's going to be hit or miss. Um, so, but um, and so uh, the other things that I work on I, that I think are, are important to mention, which are related to what I'm going to show today, is I um, help to I don't know what the right term is administer, run, manage, participate in something called the Processing Foundation. And the Processing Foundation, it's a, it's, a, it's a United States charity, a nonprofit um, company that maintains a bunch of open source uh, software toolkits for the arts. Uh, processing, P5JS. Um, if you don't have a P5 sticker, um, you, you can get one. I, don't have, I didn't bring any processing stickers. I didn't have any, unfortunately. But, but, but if you want to see one, Simon here has one. So. <laughs> um, so, um, so, um, so one of the things that, um, so, so Processing Foundation has, does a lot of in, uh, community and education initiatives. One project in particular that I want to mention is that I just did called P5. Um, something that I started working on a little over a year ago is a project called um, ML5. And this is an open source library. It's um, uh, ML, the five is an homage. That's a, did I use a French word, maybe, slightly? No. <laughs> I won't, uh, I, 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 did, I do have like high school, American high school level French, which is very bad. Um, but we'll see if I can, we'll see how much uh, courage I have later to use any of my French. Um, but so the five is an homage to P5, but this project is funded actually through a grant from Google, uh, which comes from the team um, that created something called uh, tensorflow.js. So I'm just giving you that as background for what I want to do in the workshop today. What I want to attempt to do in the workshop today is build a simple image classification engine in JavaScript in the browser using the P5 web editor. So you don't, so, um, so 
let's let me think here for a second. So if you you any all of you are welcome to be here no matter what your background and skill level is. I imagine that some of you this might be kind of beginner for, and some of you might maybe who have just started programming, there might be some stuff that's very new and confusing. So I'll try to manage that as best as I can. But you can certainly ask questions and maybe also as a small community here, we can help each other for those of you who have a lot of experience with this. So if you're, if you're new to programming or to JavaScript, then I would suggest using the P5 web editor. I'll, I'll mention a, a particular link you'll need to go to in a second. But if you're experienced with web development and JavaScript, you, don't, you could be following along and doing the coding through whatever editor, system, build environment that you so desire. <laughs> but, um, but you'll need to have um, the things that you'll need. If you're in the P5 web editor, we'll all get packaged there for you. If you're not, you're going to need to have the P5 libraries. And you can get those through uh, a CDN link, which, which, is, um, which is here. So even if you just go to the P5 web editor and open up the index.html file, you'll find these. So at some point, if anybody's like really stuck and can't find P5, let me know and I'll try to, oh, I'm definitely gonna like pause and take breaks. So my goal is to spend about an hour, it's one o'clock now, um, kind of talking about what, uh, how image classification works in ML5 and a particular algorithm called KNN, which stands for K nearest neighbor, um, and try to build up something and then hopefully if that goes well, then we can just hang out here for the, a second hour and people can try to make something with it. Maybe towards the end, people could share a couple things if, or, or just, you know. So this can, this will start very presentational, but I'm happy for this to move towards being more just hanging out and working on stuff. All right? Um, okay, so, um, and let me just, let me just show an important link here. Um, so if, uh, right here, github.com slash Schiffman slash Le Tank Workshop. Um, this is where um, I, at least so far, <laughs> put all the links of the things that are relevant. And um, I, will, I will go over this in more detail in a second, but this, this is probably the most important link for you, web editor template, because the thing that I want to mention is that um, here I am in the web editor, over on the top left, up there, if I click this little arrow shape, You'll see in here, it says ml5.min.js. So I have built a version of the ML5 library just for this workshop with some new features that don't exist in the published version of ML5. So if you were to be using the published version of ML5, the stuff that I'm gonna to try to code today won't work. <laughs> so, um, so that's um, important. And if you aren't used to, you'll need to, you'll start here. And then the first thing you can do is just do uh, save or duplicate, I think. Um, so if you, if you want to use the P5 web editor and you haven't before, uh, I would take the time right now just to go to editor.p5js.org and sign up for an account. And then you can go to uh, this link and click on web editor template. But I'm going to... I'm going to be showing you a whole bunch of demos and things before we, I actually start writing code, but I just wanted to, in case people are trying to figure out to get set up. Um, yeah. Don't you like to use the high contrast? Uh, yeah, so I usually do. This is a good, good, good question um, that Simon has asked. So here in settings, um, there are, there's, a, there's a few different views, and usually I use this high contrast mode. I didn't use it because... Um, it just wasn't set to it actually on my laptop, but also I think I'm gonna have a bunch of text that with this gray background might end up looking a little weird. So let, I'll put it back here to this. Um, okay, um, all right, anybody have any like just sort of general questions or logistical questions in terms of like how to be set up before we start? Oh, and then there's the Wi-Fi over here, um, which is, uh, I guess I won't, I won't broadcast the secret Wi-Fi. <laughs> But, but you, people can see it and pass it along. I don't know. <laughs> what, what, could, what could possibly go wrong with me saying what the Wi-Fi password is? But that seems like, seems like I shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, I think what I'm going to start with, actually, is this website called Teachable Machine. How many of you have seen this? 
couple people. So, um, so Teachable Machine is a project that was made by Google Creative Lab and a, a bunch uh, in collaboration with a bunch of different research teams at Google. And it was this came out like quite a while ago before the official JavaScript TensorFlow was launched. Um, and it demonstrates something uh, to me like this is a really amazing demonstration of what is very recent, only recently possible to do in a web browser. So um, I'm going to skip the tutorial and just run this to show this to you. So the idea of a teachable machine, so just, you know, spoiler alert, my goal is to actually basically build a version of this in the P5 web editor. It will have none of the bells and whistles that you're seeing here in terms of design and, you know, thoughtful interaction. Um, but, but it will have the functionality it will allow you to, uh, create an interactive system in the browser that might be different than a way you've thought about it previously. So just to show you the way this works, I, I, I didn't actually, um, I think I, I practiced this with my code example earlier, so let's see. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna basically teach this machine uh, to learn three different, what are often referred to as classes, or you can call them labels, um, uh, three kinds of images. So one image is just gonna be me, that'll be green. So I'm holding this down. So it's just learning, like if I just move around here, this is, I'm giving it lots of examples of me in the web browser. Okay, sorry, not in the web browser, me, just me in the camera. Now, I'm gonna step away, <laughs> and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna train it just on with nothing. I think what you just heard is the, is yeah. the tutorial playing out, which yes. gives you three examples <laughs> for, Yes, so if you, yeah, you're right. If you watch the tutorial, it'll walk you through this. And so the last thing I'm gonna train it with is with me holding this book that I found here called Blog Story. I don't know. Um, so, uh, okay, so now that I've done this, I've now trained this system. And you can see when I'm sitting here, it's confidence, and actually only when I'm looking straight ahead, it's confidence is 99% that it, that's me, gr the green category, the green label. If I walk away, you should see it. Oops, I unplugged my laptop. I will plug this back in just to, um, We should see that it became confident in purple. If I sit back down, we're back to green. And, and then the shows up. now if I uh, hold the book, it's orange. And so what Simon is pointing out is right. So it, this is also showing you like it's going to display a different GIF based on which category. It can also do sound. So it's playing birds, trombone, birds. Trombone, guitar, okay. So, um, so this is the idea. This is the idea of, um, of, how, of, of how the sort of like process of image classification works. That you're teaching the computer, you're saying here's a lot of examples of images of cats. Here's a lot of examples of images of dogs. The computer, in theory, is going to learn from that. And then you can present it with new images, and it will make an appropriate guess. So, but there's something that's, uh, that I'm not telling you, which is super important. So this is, um, this is working only because it is building on top of something that's already um, already been trained on millions and millions of images. So this is a process known as transfer learning. So, does anybody have any questions about, like, just, I'm going to switch over to some slides that are going to kind of, like, go, pull, go underneath the hood of this a little bit more. But before I move away from here. Okay. So, um, let me just close this window. Um, and I'm going to, so the, this, by the way, so one thing that I want to mention is um, Yining Shi, who is a, a colleague at NYU at ITP, um, she taught a course this past semester called Machine Learning for the Web. And it's basically, it's a seven week course that goes through some, the basics of machine learning and different kinds of algorithms and models. And so here's a bunch of, and so basically what I'm attempting to do in this workshop is what's here in week two. But there's lots of other features of, of the ML5 library, the um, TensorFlow library that might be things you would wanna look into later. Um, and I forgot to include, oh, I really didn't wanna to have to pull up my, YouTube channel, I meant to have a link to this. Let me make sure my volume is off. Oops. Um, yeah, okay. So let me, uh, I just also wanted to mention, uh, um, uh, shoot, where, where am I looking? This is what I'm looking for. Um, so this particular playlist 
also goes through, and I, I realize people who are maybe watching this live, I'm stepping away. So I guess I could swivel this. <laughs> um, so um, this particular playlist is actually, in some ways, somewhat of a prerequisite. <laughs> so I'm kind of going to gloss over some of the stuff that is in some of these videos. But certainly, if you want to, after today, go back and dive a little more deeply into some of this stuff, this is some material that you could look at. And the thing that's different, the thing that I want to point out, what I'm, tr what I'm doing in this workshop today is almost exactly what's in video four and five but I'm going to use a different algorithm for number five called KNN. This is a recent feature of the ML5 library that Yining, she, who taught that class, added to the library itself. So um, as we go through, maybe I'll come back and try to distinguish those a bit more, but that just wanted to like sort of give you this context. Okay, so I'm going to go to Yining's presentation and, and use some of that to kind of talk through um, to talk through uh, uh, how so how this actually works. So where's uh, present? Okay. Um, and thank you to Yining for allowing me to use her amazing presentation. So ML5 library comes with a, something called a pre-trained model. A pre-trained model is a machine learning model that somebody has already spent the time to train uh, to recognize images. And the particular model that, that, that ML5 comes with is, is um, called MobileNet. So MobileNet, um, you can see this is what MobileNet does. It basically looks at an image and then it says like, oh, it's a, a robin and it has a confidence of 99%. So weirdly, MobileNet, so MobileNet is kind of amazing in that it's this machine learning model that you could just immediately have access to and we could actually, um, I'm going um, I'm gonna go to ml5js.org I'm going to go to examples. I'm going to quickly click on um, video classification. So this is an example now of MobileNet trying to classify the images in this video. And you can see, let's see if we can get this maybe. Sunscreen, sunblocker. Almost said book, I thought it bookstore at one point. Let's see, bottle of water maybe. Beer glass, water bottle, water bottle. So, and you look at these sunglasses, bow tie. Usually it says, um, yeah, so this is the thing. Mach um, it, machine learning models are only as good as the data set with which they were trained. All right, so maybe you should try it with an eraser, maybe? <laughs> well, do you think that the eraser will work well? Well, well what, would, would the eraser work with the, well, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's a, a meat cleaver. <laughs> so, um, so, uh, so one of the, so let me go back to this presentation here. So, um, and let me find uh, this. So MobileNet was trained on a particular image data set called ImageNet. And, uh, and basically this is like an image data set that was made just for researchers to experiment with, not necessarily for practical real world use. And it has a incredible amount of plant elements in it, it has like a whole bunch of different like sport sport things. You can see it's it's it has six one thousand six hundred three pictures of the dog. Um, so what but what the what the mobile net model which was trained on this database and I'm going to go to um, uh, here real quick to show you something. Uh, it only knows about these 1,000 things. So you can see like, this is what's so crazy a lot. Like machine learning often feels like magic. Oh, it's like this really smart, amazing system that can recognize anything. And in fact, it's really good. This particular model can recognize a variety of species of lizards and reptiles apparently, <laughs> but it can't recognize a person. So, um, so that's one thing that's important. While it's useful and fun to play with, um, and it's a nice demonstration of the idea of image classification, it's not necessarily going to be really uh, useful for you to use with your own project, unless what you happen to do is you want a project about rare bird species. <laughs> um, then maybe the mobile net model will by accident be very useful to you. But what it actually does, one of the things, oh yeah, so this is the list of the classes. Um, 
So there is something, however, you probably don't realistically have access to a database of 50 million images. So let's say what you want to do is recognize the, the example that Yining has made and that I'm going to do something with is like rock, paper, scissors. The game which I learned today is Pierre Foy Ciseau. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would have said Roche, by the way, when we determined, but apparently you didn't say that. Okay, so yeah. Um, so rock, paper, scissors. So you would, would you, like, if you wanted to train a machine learning model to recognize you making the rock gesture or the paper gesture or the scissors gesture, mobile net's not gonna do that because it's not able, it doesn't know anything about images of people's hand gestures. But there is a process called transfer learning, which um, is defined here as use the knowledge gained while solving one problem and applying it to a different but related problem. And what, um, what, um, what MobileNet actually does, the math behind MobileNet is when it looks at a cat image, what it actually does is creates a graph of probabilities. And you can see these are all 1,000 things it knows about. And it ended up here with this very high probability that it is like you know, number 288, or 280, the class ID is 285, Egyptian cat. So this is what, um, this is the end result of the machine learning. And this actually, by the way, comes from this really nice observable notebook that I'll, might, that I'll click on in a moment also um, by Nikhil Thorat, who's one of the creators of, uh, on the development team of Ten TensorFlow.js. Um, so this is, the this is what the machine learning model actually outputs, an array of probabilities. But if you were to, and again, this isn't gonna, this workshop, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna kind of like hand wave the aspects of how neural networks work. But if I were to, a neural network, in, in one way to describe it is, right, if, if the image is the input and the very last thing that comes out is a list of probabilities, which I'm showing you right here, there are actually a whole bunch of steps in between. And one of those steps, which is the last step right before the probability, is known as the like logits activation. So this is basically <coughs> the unnormalized predictions vector, which sounds like a very fancy word, but basically this is, this is basically looking at a, almost like a rating of a numeric rating for how likely a, the, the particular image is any one of these categories. And um, you can see here that you see these high spikes, and you, but what, um, what this gets turned into in the mobile net model is something much simpler because all you want is kind of like image classification is the answer. Which one is the most likely? So soft mat max is a mathematical function that basically squashes everything and leaves the highest ones. But this is actually a, is, is like this numeric essence of that image. This is what's known as like a feature vector. In other words, the image, which is maybe 250, I don't know what the dimensions are, but let's say it's 256 by 256 pixels, has, um, that's uh, how many numbers? Whoa, could go out of here. Um, I should know this math, but I'm, I'm in front of a live audience. So that's 65,000 um, pixels. And if they're RGB, suddenly we have like, 196,000 numbers. So 196,000 numbers. No, I think that's wrong. Okay, what did I do wrong? The, sorry. This is, by the way, this is like actually what happens in a this usual is, live stream. This is wrong because yeah. every pixel can be one of uh, 256 cubed possibilities. Right. There's, a, there's infinitely more possibilities. That's, that's right. So there's, there's 256, Simon's right, there's 256 to the third power possible uh, grayscale values, I could say. But, but no, no, not grayscale, RGB. Yeah, RGB. Well, <laughs> RGB, right. But, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's 256 times 256 spots, yeah. pixels, and each, each spot has 256 to the third power possible uh, RGB values. Yes, but the point of what I'm saying is whatever, the, whatever that actual math is, which I'm getting slightly wrong, but thankfully Simon is here to correct me, this is a, much, this is a lot less information. This is like a thousand numbers. And so the, what, what, the, what the neural network actually learns to do, even though we use it in this end result of saying like, oh, it's a cat, it boils a giant amount of data, all these pixels, all down these into pixels its essence. 
That's 256 to the fifth possibility. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so this particular, this particular like, uh, this particular array is known as the features. So what we can then do, um, and there's here's some more examples. So let me let's look at some of these. Um, uh, okay. So what we can then do is we can make use of the fact that MobileNet is very good at taking any image and making it into an array of numbers. And then what can we do with that? So uh, the reason why, I was also using this term called vector. I'll write this over here. So uh, I usually, when I think of a vector, I think of like an arrow. It's uh, um, and what that this is a vector in two dimensional space. You can have a vector in three dimensional yes. space. Yes, and it has an x and y component. But as Simon is saying, you can have a vector in three dimensional space, which should have x, y, z component. The truth of the matter is, mathematically speaking, even though our brains aren't really able to visualize past three dimensions in any easy way, this list of numbers is basically a vector in 1,000 dimensional space. So another way to represent a vector is a list of numbers. Yes, exactly, a plain list of numbers. So if I said to you on this, on this whiteboard over here, and I know, I guess I will make some small effort to turn this this way. If, you know, this point here, is it more similar to this point or this point? You might no. intuitively say this point because it's a closer distance. So we can see that, um, and, and we could also, we could say, this is often, I think an example I gave in some of the videos is if we thought of, think of RGB color, if we filled this room with red, green, and blue colors, um, where like this axis was the amount of red, this axis was the amount of green, and then this axis was the amount of blue, similar colors would be near each other. So looking at how data appears near to other data in space is a measurement of similarity. So if I were to basically look, these two are probably pretty near each other in a thousand dimensional space, right? And this is what we can, this is, so the process of transfer learning is basically use MobileNet to get an a thousand, a thousand numbers from an image and then find um, and then the, the algorithm that I want to show you is this k nearest nearest, k nearest neighbor, k nearest nearest, um, which basically is a way of saying, okay, which category is something um, is something a member of based on its proximity to other entities in that same space. So if we go all the way back to that teachable machines, just for a second now. Um, if I go all the way back to here, what I'm basically saying is, here's a whole lot of examples of me in a thousand dimensional space. Here's a whole bunch of examples of nobody in a thousand dimensional space. And now here's a new image. Look, is it closer to images that it already knows about of me in the picture or with me not in the picture? And this new image is closer to all of those, but I'm not, if I were to like try to compare every single pixel color, I might be able to sort of get something like this to work, but it would run super slow and it wouldn't be very accurate. But the fact that MobileNet already knows so much about what's the, mean, the meaningful parts of images and turns it into this 1,000 dimensional array that we can basically take, forget about this probabilities. We basically get rid of that last layer about with the actual label and just use the features of an image to try to match any new image with previous images. I don't know if that made any sense at all. Do you have, uh, that oh, questions? Any sense. <laughs> Anybody have questions? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, so, the, sorry, this technique. But, but this image request to the server. Yes, so, sorry, so I, I kind of, I'm, I'm, jump, I'm jumping around here quite a bit, certainly, but this technique, the, the mobile net model is just a digital file with a lot of, like, information, numbers in it. And that's a thing that you could use in Python, in the browser, 
Um, and then th so the concept of transfer learning can be applied in any programming language with a lot of different machine learning libraries or from scratch if you have you know, a few years to like write every, <laughs> every bit of the algorithm yourself. But what I'm going to show you is that what's in, what's, what's w the reason why this is exciting, at least to me, um, is the fact that this is a way to get an image classification system working in real time in the browser, which b prior to this, prior to the JavaScript TensorFlow version and a lot of these models like MobileNet being made JavaScript compatible would be things that you would need more powerful computers or lots more training time to be able to do. Okay, so let's see what, um, so let me show you actually a really nice example um, of how this is, can be uh, applied. And so this is one of the TensorFlow.js examples um, and I'm just gonna click on it here. So let's see. This is, uh, yes, allow use of the camera. Okay, so I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. This is basically uh, a project that someone made. I don't, apologies that I don't know the name of it, but this uh, is one of the official TensorFlow.js examples where what I can do now is I can say, okay, um, uh, let's say I need, Pac-Man has four controls. So what I can do is basically create a physical controller from myself to, uh, to control the game of Pac-Man if I train, uh, uh, I train a set of images for both right, left, up, and down. So uh, I'm gonna just say that uh, uh, me just looking here regularly is, is this. So I'm gonna click here, this is, this is for moving up. Uh, moving to the right is <laughs> uh, I'll hold this book for moving to the left. It's gonna be impossible to remember. And, uh, and I'll just leave for moving down. So now, in theory, I'm going to hit this. Now, something that's really important. I don't know, you might not have noticed this, but when I was, um, when I was <laughs> um, showing you Teachable Machine, there was no button that said train. I just added the images, and then it started guessing. But here in this system, there's a button set that says train. So there's actually two different ways of approaching this same, there's more than two. But in terms of the examples that are in the ML5 library, and that you'll find with tensorflow.js, there are two distinct ways of approaching this problem. This is using a slightly different one. This is using the method that's actually in the video tutorials that I made, and now I'm showing you this other method called KNN. And I think I need to, like, Pause for a minute or two and try to distinguish those more clearly, but for now I'm just gonna mention those are two different things. So I'm gonna hit train. So it's training. Loss, by the way, is a key word that you'll see in machine learning quite a bit. It, also it's called cost. also called cost. And the fact that it's zero is probably not actually true. It's probably 0. .0000, that's a bunch more zeros before it gets to some actual numbers. But um, it's the amount of error. So it's been training, and how does it know the amount of error? Well, it trains itself with all these images, knowing which ones are right, left, up, and down, and then it almost is like, well, even though I know the answers, I could also try to guess the answers. So then it looks at those images again, trying to guess what the answers are, and sees if it guesses the correct answers. If it, if it didn't get a single one wrong, it would be 100% correct, meaning its error would be zero. Um, okay, so now I'm going to click play, and we're going to see if I can play this. Uh, where, where do I want to go? To the left first, maybe? Oh, wait, wait, it hasn't started yet. Left, okay, up. Up, up, okay, wait, if I want to go right. <laughs> down, no, no, down, there we go. Uh, left, so you get the idea, I'm not sure, this is, uh, left, up. No, oh, ah! So, okay, so the, the point of this and um, uh, another project that I will mention, which is in this presentation towards the end, um, is, uh, oh, this is the PostNet stuff, which I'm gonna talk about, is, uh, this is by an, um, an ITP uh, researcher named Alejandro called Pong ML. Um, I won't play this through you right now, but this is a similar idea where he trained, um, 
a, a teachable machine for certain gestures to move palm paddles up and down. So this is a, a pretty, uh, you know, there's, I, I, hopefully your, idea, your brains are filling with ideas beyond just like, oh, I could train this to be a, like a weird gestural controller for a simple 2D game. But this is a nice way of sort of demonstrating what is the, the sort of creative possibilities of what you can do with this kind of uh, transfer learning technique. And this, you, you, so there's, the other thing I think is interesting to mention here is that you'll notice that like I just trained this right now. So uh, in theory, a couple things. One is I could, I could save all of these training images and the resulting model and then load it again. Like if I refresh this page, all that, all that work is gone. But I'm, what I'm going to show you when I get to the examples, you can actually save that and load it again later. But even though you can do that, which is more typical of machine learning systems, what's exciting about this is you could imagine building like an interactive like museum exhibit kind of interactive kiosk where it's just continually being, people are continually training it all day or all night or all week or whatever, however long it's open for. Um, okay. So let me see, what did, I, what did I miss here? So let's see what else is in um, Yining's presentation that I wanted to. Uh, yeah, so I've got, I'm gonna, I wanna talk about PoseNet, but I, you know, I wanna be conscientious about the time here. Um, so let me look here and see uh, if there's anything important here that we missed. So this is more for the code stuff that I'll come by. These are some of those examples. Okay, and actually let me just briefly show you, um, oops. This is Nikhil's Observable. Observable is a uh, system for creating kind of like interactive JavaScript notebooks. It's one way of describing it. It's built by a bunch of people, but I think started by Mike Bostock, who's the creator of a JavaScript library called D3. And so uh, Nikhil, this is how you would basically create a te the Teachable Machine demo um, with TensorFlow.js. And I'm hopefully gonna show you an even easier way uh, of doing it with ML5. But the reason why I wanted to bring this up here is this is a nice also demonstration of how K nearest neighbor works. Because again, we're in two dimensions here. And you can see it's trying to guess, is my mouse mouse part of the blue, I guess that's kind of blue, purple, I don't know, blue group or red group? And basically, the, the reason why uh, the algorithm is called K nearest neighbors is it classifies it according to a voting system. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I just stepped on this. Everything's fine. Um, it classifies it according to a voting system. So in other words, for this new point, it's looking for its k nearest neighbor, k being three. Two of its nearest neighbors are red. Only one of its nearest neighbor is blue. Therefore, it is more likely to be of the category red. It is more likely a cat than a dog. But you can see that this is a kind of algorithm. I, I, first, I could add this, which is showing you like actually where is that decision boundary? That's every any, any point in space that's on this side is going to be classified at, as part of this red category. And then you could also see how this works if we change like k. So you can see here, it's you can see that here it's, <laughs> it's got one, two, three, four, five, six that it's close. Only six that it's closest to that are red, and three that are blue. Um, so this is a particular algorithm that's a classic machine learning algorithm, k nearest neighbor, that can be computed very, very quickly, which what makes it powerful. And it actually, the, um, oh, look at this. I didn't even notice this. You could change this to three classes. So now we could see how it's, categori how it's categorizing based on three different, cl three different classes. Okay. So uh, a couple things. So let me quickly, let me close a bunch of these windows that I don't necessarily need open anymore because we're going to start writing the code for it and you can follow along. But before I do that, um, uh, here we go. Um, let me, whoa, oh boy, there's already lots of links here. Thank you, Alka, uh, who is watching the live stream and I gave right permissions on this repo who added a ton of stuff. Fantastic. Okay, um, so what I want to just show you is are these two examples real quickly. So this is, if you go to this one that says KNN image example, this is basically a fully working um, uh, KNN image classification example in the P5 web editor. And I'm gonna go back to a blank 
a, a blank sketch and put the pieces together step by step because I think that'll be more most helpful while following. But if at any point you just want to go and use this, this is the sort of working version of it and has a few, certainly it's not as sophisticated as teachable machines but has more um, bells and whistles. So um, I'm, I'm just going to mention that that's there. But the other thing that I want to think, what's, what's interesting about the KNN algorithm is even though I'm talking about, okay, well, we get those, you know, quote unquote logits um, from MobileNet, that vector of a thousand numbers. Lots of, there's lots of other kinds of data that comes as an array of numbers. So this, the ML5 KNN classifier object can take any arbitrary input. So for example, another example that I want to show you, which I don't think we'll have time to code the whole thing, but I will show it to you is this PoseNet example. So what this example is doing, this is using a machine learning model called PoseNet, which basically makes a guess uh, as to where, and this is really designed, this is not designed to, this is designed to be used with like more of a full body view. So attempt to see if I can make that happen. Well, that's close enough. But you can see what PoseNet does is it can, it looks at any 2D image with a person in it. With the, with the head, it's kind of gone long. Yeah. It only works as, if your face is more like if I'm, Yes, right. If I turn to the side, it, it tries to make its best guess, but it's most accurate with a, a well-lit, full body image. Um, so what it's doing is it's basically making a big list of X and Y values. Here's the XY value for the left, hand, the right hand, the right elbow, the right shoulder. It, it, it kind of has this skeleton it knows about. So what this is doing, and I'll, I'll go back to, uh, it actually will work even, is I can basically say like, oh, let me make two categories here. Let me say that these are a bunch of examples of me with my head to the right. And here's a bunch of examples of me to my head with the left. And now you should see 100% B, 100% A, oh, and goodbye screen. I don't know what just happened there. Oh, that was weird. Uh, I don't know why that just decided to completely die, but I'll do it again. Left, I think I did it the other way before. Oh, weird. Uh, and so you can see it's able so so this this is not using even though the image is there the KNN classifier is not trying to categorize the image input at all it's trying to categorize the results of the PoseNet model which are X Y positions of the body and then so you could imagine using this with a, a, an application to choreography or um, uh, uh, and, uh, or gesture in a, in a more robust way than the, the image classification example work. I don't know why this decides to just like die after every few months, after a little bit. That's the, uh, I think, the live workshop uh, disease that like um, live demoitis, I think it's called. I don't know why that decided to just stop working. Okay. So that's the sort of like story of all of the pieces. Yeah, which was Yes, <laughs> so I'm keeping an eye on the time. Thank you, Simon. Um, so what I want to do now is I want to start a bit from scratch. And so if you want to follow along, you would go here to this link, Web Editor Templates. And uh, you should see that it says Le Tank Template by Coding Train. And then what you're going to want to do is you have to be logged in. I'm already logged in as Coding Train. But what you would want to do is then save, or I'm going to do um, duplicate. And then what you would see is LaTank template copy by your username. So I'm going to give everybody a minute to see if they can get to the point where they have a copy of this. And if you want to work offline, you could also just do uh, file download. And it'll download all the libraries and everything. And you can use a different text editor. So I'm just going to give everybody a minute or two to see if you can get set up with the web editor um, uh, at this particular, uh, with this particular copy of this template. Normally, I would start a workshop with just like, oh, just start a blank sketch. But the reason why I can't do that here is you need a copy of this because it has this, a special version of the ML5 library as part of it. So you can check 
in this left-hand column to make sure you see ml5.min.js. Anybody who's get this stuck, maybe just raise your hand and I'll come float around. If you've got it working, we can help your neighbor also. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, okay, so uh, you're logged in. So I wanted to do the Check. <laughs> I don't. Let's just. I'm just going to check real quick on the live audience. Do I have any? Oh. Oh. I see people are tweeting about this workshop. That's great. <laughs> um, uh, where am I? Let's go to live stream. Oh, there's like a lot of people watching this. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, tank template, tank template, copy. Okay. Okay. I'm going to move on in a minute, in a, like 30 seconds to a minute. Anybody stuck and want, want to ask? Okay. If you're too shy, poke the person next to you. Get them to help you. We're all, we're all nice, helpful people here. I can see a sea of smiling, generous faces. Okay. Okay, so, um, so I don't know how far, like, I, I mean, we'll, I, you know, certainly we have a, a fair amount of time. I want to leave some time. Um, um, for people to just try to play around with it a bit on their own. So I'll try to get as far with this as I can um, in the next half an hour-ish. And then we can always fall back on the sort of pre-made example. And really, you can just kind of give that a try. But so, so I'm going to, um, you can follow along. I am going to, uh, the first thing that I want to add is just the video, live video. So um, I'm going to create a variable called video. And then I'm going to say video equals create capture video. <laughs> I think that's what it is. Let me run this. So if you've never used the P5 web editor before, it's really just this is the text editor where you can write JavaScript and you can stop and restart your program with these stop and play buttons. You can also click this auto refresh and it'll update. It'll rerun the sketch as you're typing, but I'm going to keep that off for right now. Sorry for the people who are watching the live stream because they're going to see them twice. Yes. <laughs> Yes, now you see me next to me, probably. Um, OK, so now we have the video. Now, one thing I want to do is I actually just want to um, I want to make this smaller. Um, and I, I want to just, I think it's going to be, this is not really important for the machine learning aspect, but I just want to take this video and draw it on the canvas. So that's this sort of like drawing canvas, which P5 is sort of by default set up to work with. Um, and so. I am going to say uh, image video zero zero. I'm going to change the video's size to 320 to 40. So now you can see the video is in two places. So yeah, three times. So now I'm going to say video dot hide. And so now I just have the video image. So this is just a few steps, a few bits of code to just get the video drawing in the canvas. Uh, can people see this font size okay? Uh, I can see it okay. Okay, I'm, uh, so I'm just going to try to pause, but I'm going to move fairly quickly through the stuff. But you should all just wave your arm, flail your arms at me to slow down if you, if you need each other question. Okay. So now, now the next piece that we need is we need to have this thing called the ML5 feature extractor. Uh, so I'm going to call this uh, feature extractor. <laughs> I guess I'll call it feature extractor. I don't know what else to call it. 
Um, so I'm going to say feature extractor equals ML5 dot feature extractor. Then, so the feature extractor, and, and this isn't really a diagram, <laughs> is the ML5 class that knows how to get this array of those values, that a thousand dimensional, that list of a thousand numbers from an image. But it, it knows how to do that based on a pre-existing model. And that pre-existing model is uh, MobileNet. So I'm going to, and in theory, we could apply the same technique to non-mobile other models. But ML5 really only, at the moment, only supports MobileNet, maybe one or two other models. And then I'm also going to give it a callback. Model ready. So this is the kind of thing, this, by the way, requires an internet connection. I mean, it already requires an internet connection to be using the P5 web editor. But even if you, if you weren't using the P5 web editor, it's got to load the mobile net model from the cloud. It's possible to download that and have that locally, but that's not a thing by default that it does. So I'm going to say console.log model ready. So now if I run this again, we can see but down here in the console, I don't know if you see that at the bottom, it now says model ready. So I've created the video and I have made a feature extractor. So I have video, which is the source of my images. And by the way, you don't have, you could do this with, you know, JPEG, PNG image files. You don't have to do this with live video. That's just the way I'm demonstrating it in the sort of like live interactive sense. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a function called mouse pressed. Probably gonna, I'm going to need some buttons at some point, but this will be fine right now. And I'm just going to show you something. There is a method feature, which is feature extractor dot infer. I think this is all I need to write. So what this function does, I could, I might have this wrong. <laughs> I'm going to have to look this up. What this function does is it says Give me that list of a thousand numbers from an image, and that image is the video. And I'm going to say, I'm going to put that in an array called inputs, and then I'm going to just do something called inputs. I'm going to say inputs print, and I'll exp I want to make sure this works, and then I'll explain again what's going on. So this is me just testing. The model is loaded. What I want to do is when I press the mouse, I should see here in the console, a list of a thousand numbers. If that happens, then things are working. There we go. I don't see all the numbers, but I see some numbers. Dot, dot, dot. dot, dot, dot. Some numbers. <laughs> yeah. So this is very important. We cannot move on if you don't have this step working. So you should be able to see the video, create the feature extractor object, and then infer that's been, by the way, I'm not 100% sure infer is the best name for this function. So if anybody has any ideas about that, we can join the ML5, open source project with ML5 and file a GitHub issue saying, oh, I have an idea for the name of the infer function. It might be good, actually. But the idea is to do inference, to infer the essence of the image, to take that image and give me my list of 1,000 numbers. So the weird thing is, though, how come I didn't just say, like, console.log inputs? So this is, like... You know, if this were like a longer course about machine learning, we'd have done a lot of steps leading up to this point, but I'm just going to kind of give you the quick details here. Um, if I click, look at this, whoa, look at this. Is disposed it, internal shape, D type, size, 1,000? Yeah. So what this thing actually is, and now I, I meant to have both of these print out. Even though I'm describing to you let me just get this back. What I'm describing to you that the logits is just like a plain array of numbers. Logits? <laughs> or whatever? Yeah, how does it, what's the correct pronunciation? I don't know. <laughs> but um, I'm describing inputs as, and I don't know, why did I call them inputs? That doesn't make any sense. Well, I meant to, I meant to, I, I'm going to attribute that to jet lag. <laughs> um, you're, my brain is only working at like half capacity here. Um, so this array of numbers isn't a plain JavaScript array of numbers. It's a special kind of object called a tensor. And by the way, that's why tensorflow is called tensorflow. The idea of a tensor 
is a, it's a fancy word for an array of numbers, but it, of any dimension. So it could be, uh, you know, a multi-dimensional array, um, uh, a, a, a two-dimensional matrix, a three-dimensional array. It's, uh, tensor is just this generic term, and so t the library TensorFlow is named for that because that's the sort of core building block of machine learning systems, right? Even though we think of like, oh, it's generating, po my, well, in creative machine learning, maybe we think of this machine learning algorithm is generating poetry or it's classifying an image. These are just the sort of human uh, dressing we put all around the system. But the inputs and outputs of a machine learning system are always numbers, tensors. So what the feature extractor does is it gives you this object called a tensor. Now, if I wanted to look at it as a plain array, I could say uh, values equals logits. Dot, I'm going to uh, use a function called data sync. Data sync is like a function in, that's part of tensorflow.js that will actually pull the values out of the tensor and put them in a regular array. Um, and now if I click here, we can see, there we go. We got an array that has a thousand numbers in it. So I could look at it this way if I want, but I actually, that's just for demonstration purposes. <coughs> I want it as a tensor because the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take that tensor and add it to the KNN, a KNN classifier, right? So what I need now is I'm going to make one more variable called KNN. I'm going to say KNN equals ML5. I'm totally making this up. Classifier. I should look at the documentation or my other example. Let's just look at this example real quick. Yeah, ML5 KNN classifier. Got that right. Okay. Whoa. Make a, a, make a KNN classifier. And then what I could do is I could say KNN add example. These particular logits are a cat. Legit. It's legit. Too legit to quit. Okay. Um, logis. No? Sorry. That's pathetic. Um, okay. So let's, I don't know, I don't know if I got this 100% right, but let's see if this works. Let's see if at least I don't get an error. So now I'm saying like, I, if I'm here, here's, an, here's some examples of a cat. I'm not getting any error. So all I can do is assume that it's working. Now, uh, let's, let's do this in a sort of awful way. I'm going to change this to key pressed. And I'm going to say if key equals C, I'm going to get the logits out. Otherwise, if else, if, uh, whoops, key equals, this is where the YouTube uh, live chat will complain that I'm not using a switch statement. Thank you. Uh, equals D. Then uh, add an example of a dog. And let's, whoops, um, let me put some print statements in here. Console log uh, cat example added. So again, I'm doing it this way to skip over the complexity of, of making a, a, a nice interface, <laughs> just to demonstrate the idea. So now the idea here is that I can say, hey, anytime I press a key on the keyboard, I want you to extract that list of a thousand numbers associated with this image. And then I want to tell my KNN system that this is a cat or it's a dog. So uh, if I, and, and by the way, I might have to click over here first to give this area focus to register the key events. So now I should be able to say, no. <laughs> oh, it didn't work. Uh, so let's try this, console.log key. Ah! And this was happening the other day with the web editor, and then I assumed, no, this is not, this didn't just happen. Whoa, oh my goodness. Yeah, this is the demo-itis again. Look at this, what? Oh, I mean the, whoa, the template. Oh, weird, this is my code. But it's like, oh yeah, this is fine. There it is. I don't know why it disappeared. Weird. The, uh, you should know that the P5 web editor is a 
you know, a relatively new project. It's pretty amazing, but it, I, I have no, there have been some recent bugs with it. All right, sorry. Let me, yeah, I don't know why that wasn't working before, and now it is. Hopefully you don't lose your, by the way, if, you, if you're feeling nervous, which I am in a constant state of, um, you can always just do something like, uh, you know, copy paste your code every once in a while into like a text file somewhere. In case you're worried that the, the web, the, the web editor is going to eat your homework. Okay. Um, so, okay, so this is working now. I don't know why it wasn't before. Uh, oh, okay, let me uh, start it over. So we can see that now it's adding some examples of cats, adding some examples of dogs. Oh, okay. actually, I, I, I just want to come over here and hang on. I am going to make... A, hang on, zoom out a bit. All right, there. <laughs> I just made a photo of the cat. <laughs> All right, there's a cat here. This is my favorite sticker, by the way, but I, unfortunately I don't have any of those. <laughs> okay, so, um, so sorry, let me, so this is where we are so far. So the idea, the idea here is that we have loaded the video, <coughs> We have created, and let me see if I can get more of the code in case people are still following along. We lower this here. So this is almost all of the code. <laughs> I can't get it all onto the screen, but um, the, we're creating the video. We're creating a feature extractor. Let me move this over. Then we are also creating a classifier. So the feature extractor gets numbers from an image. The classifier associates those numbers with a particular category. And I just made up cat and dog as a kind of classic machine learning example of distinguishing cats and dogs. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just pause for another minute to see if people are get caught up here. And then we're almost ready for like the last piece of this. I, I realize that this is actually quite, there's not a lot to this if you don't build a whole interface. <laughs> Anybody have any questions they want to ask about what I've coded so far? Any questions? P5, JavaScript, ML5, machine learning, everything's fair game. Yes, so I will, I will get to the saving. So that's the, so the, the, what's left for me to do? The next thing, what, the things that are left for me to do is number one, to actually make it, make a guess, right? I've gotta have a guess. And then number two, um, I want to show you how to save your training set. And then I, I realize there's still this, I feel like I need to make a note of this somewhere. There's still this, Ah. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's still this question of K and N versus, uh, even though I, uh, there's so many terms, they all sort of mean different things and the same thing. But I, I want to talk about the difference between the KNN classifier and the technique that I used in the video series, which are for the same result, to train your own image classifier with built on top of MobileNet, but they're both slightly different. And I kind of like the KNN technique better for a couple reasons, though obviously there's a lot of caveats in it that comes to that. So I want to make sure I talk about that at the end before I finish. Okay, any other questions? All right, so now what I'm gonna do with my terrible no interface system is I'm gonna add the mouse pressed function back. Oh, void is processing. Actually, no, you know what I'm gonna do? Ah, oh. jet lag, jet lag. Okay, um, actually what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have it always guess. Uh, that'll be, let's, let me do mouse press first. I think we, I want it to always guess, but let me just, uh, have it guess with a mouse press right now. So for it to guess, the first thing we need to do is take, 
when you, I was about to say do the opposite of training, but it's not the opposite at all. It's the same first step. This is, by the way, training. So we should, in, in machine learning, we talk about training, and we also talk about prediction, AKA like inference. Maybe there's other words for this, guessing. <laughs> um, so for training, we say, give me the numbers that are from that image, and then train it. I'm saying, I, this is called supervised learning. I am the supervisor. This particular set of numbers associated with cat, this particular set of numbers associated with dog. Prediction is saying, oh, I don't know what it is. What I want you to do is now say, KNN classify those, that array of numbers. And then this I need a callback. Um, and I'm going to call this function. And again, I'm using kind of old style ES5 JavaScript, which hopefully doesn't mean anything to you because who wants to fill their minds with all this like ES5 versus ES6 versus ES8, all this. Is there a seven? I don't even know. I think we skipped yes, seven. seven. Yeah, seven. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Simon. <laughs> Although it has not many, new not many new features, right? So it was okay if we just talk about ES6 and ES8, maybe, do you think? Well, yeah, yeah. ES7 <laughs> does have a double asterisk uh, power side, but. <laughs> Um, okay, so, um, but uh, again, I'm writing my JavaScript to be sort of long-winded and beginner-friendly, but just for those of you who might be watching in the live stream or here, um, you can use a, a, the dot, this will return a promise. You can say canon.classify.then, or you can use the arrow syntax. There's JavaScript, uh, there's always a thousand different ways to do the same thing. But in the simplest sense, what I'm saying is, Get that num numbers from the video. Cl I, please classify that for me. And when you're done, make this event function run. This callback got results, and just print out the results to the the console. So now, in theory, if I run this again, and here, here, wait. First, I'm going to neurotically paste all the code into here just so if it all goes away. Um, okay, so now I'm going to, I, I am, a, am I a cat or a dog? I'll be a cat for today. I am a cat, it's not working, okay, cat, 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 cat. Then I will show it this book, which is a dog. Let me give it a bunch of examples of dogs. And now, for the grand finale, this will be very anticlimactic if this doesn't work. I'm going to just click the mouse, and it should say cat. Undefined. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, uh, what did I get wrong? So this is what's, um, some of this has changed a little bit. Let me look at the. Um, there was an error. Yeah, no, so there should have been an error. I knew that this error would happen. So if I haven't given it any examples, and I click the mouse, it's definitely going to give me an error, because I haven't given anything to train. We could handle that error in a more elegant way. Um, so let's let's uh, let's uh, let's look at um, let's go look at the uh, working example. Oh boy, this is the, this has changed again. Alka is working uh, working very hard here. Okay, um, let's go look at this code and find classify feature extractor. Yeah, that's fine. Infer video. Oh, features. That's a nice way. This is, by the way, I want to rename my variable because A, I, I, feel, I awkwardly can't pronounce um, logits or logits, and features is kind of a nice word because those are, that, that's what, when you hear this, oh, what are the features of the image in machine learning speak, that just means what's the boiled down numeric essence of that image into that. So let me change that. So this looks, let's, let me go. This is the working exam, this is, this is the working example. To, if anybody sees anything. It will work if you use uh, a comment. Oh, interesting. Well, yeah. So in other words, OK, hold on. Infer classifier features got results. Oh, I know what the problem is. Oh, I made the classic error. Oh, boy. I, this is an error I make every single time. <laughs> Nobody's caught it yet. In that, I, I just caught it. I mean, I didn't show it to you, so I just realized what it is. 
It's just because I come from a world of um, programming JavaScript in weird, incorrect, beginner-friendly ways, but it's not very standard. So this is how P5 would work. Like if you if you've looked at any of the P5 functions like load image or load JSON, there's typically a callback, and the argument to that callback is the stuff you want. It's the answer. It's the result. It's the JSON file. It's the image. This is a most most JavaScript libraries are written with something called error first callbacks, um, meaning the callback always has more than one argument, and the error is always first. And the reason why. Uh, people who know more about actual JavaScript programming than I do think this is important <laughs> is because this guarantees that you handle your errors, right? If, because call, if, if error came afterwards, this is just a design pattern. It's not a requirement of writing. If, if this were the way ML5 were implemented, where the results come in first, but if there's an error, it comes in second, that means I could optionally ignore the error. And this is not um, good practice in terms of writing real software that needs to be out in the world with millions of users. In the sort of like, hey, we're here at the tank in Paris messing around with P5. You know, if we don't handle our errors so well, life will go on. But so it actually, the error was undefined. It was working. So, so if I wanted to be a little bit more thoughtful about this, I would say if error, console.error, error, and I said console.log, but you can actually say console.error, else console.log results. So this, this should fix it. And actually, this should give us, um, oops, and again, the mysterious that your code disappears for no reason error. OK. Um, so one thing I want to do is I'm just going to click. Oh, oh whoa. Do we? Do we well, maybe figure well, out why? This is an image of a cat for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you could use it. So it'd be interesting as an exercise. It'd be great to try to uh, make this program, but use like images you take on your phone as opposed to like from the webcam. All right. Why is that's really weird? Does anybody? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Let's sanity check here. Stop. Play. Yeah, what's going on? Okay, there's some, there's no, okay, that's the, this is correct. This is what I was expecting to see. There is no example in any class. Huh. Okay, let's, let's, this is, this is loads of fun. This never happens when I live stream uh, ever. I never have run into errors or problems. Oh boy. Uh, ah, whoa, where am I? Save, open. Let me get my code back. Okay. Save. Home save enabled. I'm just going to let it, okay, let it rest. As long as you need to like let it rest for a minute. Yeah. Let, let, let's comment out the mouse press function for a second. Click over here, and I can add my cat and my dog examples. OK, let's put this back. Save. Let it rest for a minute. OK. <laughs> and click over here. OK. Uh, whoa! That's so weird. Is any, is, are other people having this happen to them? Uh, hold on, let's. It's working for, for you? Uh, let me go back here. Let me, okay, so let me do something just out of curiosity. Let's ch change this to like else if key equals spacebar. Let me try doing this. Oh, yeah. So oh, great. So what I'm going to do now, yeah, but that's going to happen up here in the got result callback. So what I'm going to do, just maybe, I don't know, something weird was going on with the mouse press interaction for some unknown reason that I have no idea. 
<laughs> so let's, let me see if this works here um, by just making it based on the space bar. I mean, a, a global mouse pressed event is never really a good idea anyway. <laughs> so, um, so let me add some cat examples. I'll just step out of frame to add some dog examples. And now, if I hit the space bar, okay, yeah. it's a cat. Okay, so I don't know what was going on with that weird mouse press thing. Let me step out of frame. Oops. Oops. Dog, there we go. Yay. I don't know if you people can see the bottom of the console here. Um, but by the way, what's useful about this, I'm going to click in here, is... Well, this, by the way, it also will even when it says the label that it is cat, that's giving you the answer that you want. But it also is giving will give you its confidences by label. In this case, there's only two categories. The data is so simple. It, it's uh, um, there's very few examples. So it really like this just means it matched um, it matched the image, the new image, 100% to only cat images. I so, need the other one to get this. Yeah. Because the back camera is the same. Right, we can see. Uh, confidences by label, no. So I think it's just like the sort of like smallness of the data set here. Okay. Now, um, okay, so let's, let's add a few things to this to make this a little better. Um, um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create um, a paragraph element uh, called label P, label paragraph. Label paragraph equals create P. Uh, no training data yet. So now when I run this, it's going to say here, and let me make that larger, just so it's label P style. I don't know, who knows CSS in this room? Font size, 32. <laughs> uh, let's see if that's right. There we go. So I'm just ha putting a paragraph element on the page that says no training data yet, because there is no training data. Maybe say font family Helvetica. Ah. You would prefer Helvetica? Okay, I'm gonna go with Simon's suggestion here. <laughs> Helvetica. To make it look nicer. Oh, it's beautiful now, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, okay, so now what I wanna do is, the first time, uh, the first time it has an example I'm trying to think about this. So one of the things you can get, um, let me just show you something here. This, by the way, unfortunately, the console in the P5 web editor isn't interactive. So I'm gonna actually open up the Chrome console for a second just to show you, just to test out an idea. And I have to switch it to, I have to also go here to switch it to like canvas frame so that I can use. So if I can look at the KNN variable and I can say knn.num classes. It's not in KNN. It's in the feature extractor, num classes. Yeah, I think we should change this. Because the classes, the categories aren't really part of um, part of the feature extractor. Oh no, 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 no. KNN, hold on. Class example count, that's what I'm looking for. Sorry. I basically just want to find out what variable class example count. Where was that? Uh, Whoa. Yeah, that's weird. What's going on here? Uh, but hold on, let me look at my let me look at my example because this is a thing that's in the example. Num, get num labels. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> There's a function for that. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm looking for here, ah, did I close that by accident? I certainly did. Let me go back. Um, what I want to do 
is what I want to say is I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to create a variable star um, uh, training start training or like I, I'm trying to think of a name for this variable. Um, but it, basically, what I need to do is I don't want it to start guessing until I've trained it on the first class. So I'm going to uh, basically say start it. I'm just going to say started is false. So here in key press, the first time I'm going to say if k and n get number get num labels is not equal to zero, and you haven't started already, then started equals true, and you can start classifying. So this is a little awkward. I'm sure somebody here can think of a better way, a different way of doing this. But basically, I want to start this process of classifying, and I want to classify continuously. So as long as there's at least one label, meaning I, I've at least given it a cat or a dog image, and I haven't already started, then I want to say that I've started. This is just the first time I classify. And so why am I, get, why am I seeing errors here? Unmatched. Oh, right. I, I lost a N bracket by accident. OK. So now, let's make sure this works. No training data yet. So I could press a lot of keys, but if I don't press, but until I press a C, I have to click over here first. I could press a lot of keys. Until I press a C, then you can see it classified it as a cat. Right? So it added the image and then it immediately started classifying, but just did it once. And what I want to do is when it gets the result, I want to say the result.label, label p.html, results.label. I want to put that, I want to get the actual label that it thinks it is and put it right there where it says no training data yet. And that HTML function will say, take that label and add it to the contents of the label paragraph. So let's just do this one more time. No training data. Yeah, I'm going to press D. Click over here and press D. And it put dog there because it thinks it's only got one training image. No matter what it looks at, it's always going to be a dog, right? So now, here's the magic thing. What I can then do is. Once it's done that, I can have it do it again. So this is like recursive in the sense that it's going to call classify, which will make this callback happen. It'll get the result and then immediately call classify again and make the callback happen again. So this is just going to, and now we might see something slow down or happen. We might see some problems with this. I don't know yet. I haven't tried to do it this way. I don't know what the example does. Sometimes it's nice to put a little like breathing room to like, hey, wait a couple milliseconds and then call it. But let's just see how this works. So now, no training data yet. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with a C for a cat. It's a cat. It's a cat. It's a cat now. Ooh, I'm going to give it some more examples of cats. I'm going to move out of frame. Give it some more examples of dogs. And now it should be, there we go, continuously, <laughs> do this over and over again, continuously um, uh, guessing. Ah, this worked. <laughs> All right, there's a lot of code here. Now, I'm definitely going to pause for a second because you might have questions or people might want to see certain parts, tell me to scroll to a certain spot, <clears throat> if there's a certain spot you need to see. And again, this is not the the way of doing this. This is my, like, let me just, in the short workshop time that we have today, kind of like patch a bunch of these like pieces of functionality together. The, the actual example is a bit more thoughtful. It has some buttons, it has some comments in the code, some variable naming, but this is the idea, right? The idea is I just need to give it, and by the way, I could create like 10 different categories now. These categories could be things that the user makes up. Like I could actually put, a text box here, 
and with a button and have the user enter in a label and hit submit. So you can have an infinite amount of labels. I'm using, by the way, the word label, category, and class interchangeably. The technical term is probably class for a classification, <coughs> but I like the word label, at least in English, is a little friendlier. I don't know what you would say in French. Category? <laughs> that's, just, that's just the word category in a bad French accent. <laughs> yeah. Okay, any questions? Okay, I definitely want to show about saving. I need to show you saving. So, let's, oh, whoops. Let's, let me hit stop here. Let me, I'll add another key press S because this is the best way to interact with this. And I'm going to call KNN save, cats and, uh, I'm just going to, uh, cats, dogs, dogs. So, nice thing is saving is literally as simple as just calling this function called save. So let's, we're going to train our super awesome model here. Um, cat, 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 cat. Oh no, sorry, I have to click over here first. Cat, 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 cat. Dog, 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 dog. Okay. Is it working? I'm a cat. I'm a dog. I'm a cat. Now, I'm going to press S. Look at this. Automatically to the downloads is a file called catsdogs.json. So you'll notice here that I didn't specify the .json extension, but it's adding it to the file um, automatically. If you're not familiar, JSON, J-S-O-N, is a file format. JavaScript object notation is a way of storing data with JavaScript syntax, basically. So I am now going to uh, open that file up. Let's open it in like Visual Studio Code. So we can look at it just out of, so we can see like, look, what is actually in this file? It's all of those numbers. This is what a KNN model is. It's just a list of all of the examples, all of the examples, and there are a thousand numbers that are associated with it. If I, um, I hit save here. Uh, another another nice way of looking at this actually is, I should just look at it in the browser because my browser has should have. Oh no, it doesn't have a. Uh, hold on. It's, this is worth doing for sure. I'm gonna install. I don't. I don't know why I don't have. Um, I, uh, I'm su surprised that I don't already have this extension. But. Hmm. Oh, yeah? Oh, maybe it's just a, such a big file that maybe. it doesn't work. Maybe. Yeah. Anyway, but you can see, we don't need, I just was going to try to show you, the, but this, this, it's sort of crazy. You would think, like, this is what it's actually doing? It's just a file with all the numbers in it? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it is. And, but if you think about it, we deal with files with lots of numbers. Uh, we already talked about earlier <laughs> how many numbers are part of an image, right? Um, and so, right. And we can see here that, uh, by the way, ignore this other file that happens to be on my computer. It's, it's not even a megabyte. It's 969 kilobytes, just this one file. <laughs> so this is something that's quite reasonable for it to do. All right, now, what if what I wanted to do is I wanted to load that model when well, the program actually, starts? Oh, actually, no, it's, it's not. So I'm gonna get it's actually like um about a trillion or something. Yes. <laughs> so images could easily an image file could easily have trillions of numbers in it because it's that many pixels each with an RGB. Yeah. So actually just having like a hundred example so images like each with a thousand numbers. Bytes. Right, right. All right, so there's one last step here, which is to load the JSON file. Right? 
I hear people like talking amongst themselves, which is awesome. This means like you've already moved on to maybe trying something. Or, but but, uh, but does anybody have any questions or are really stuck? I, I, I can't believe that everybody has this working perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the nice thing is you can, uh, you know, I will put this URL or Alka will do it before uh, I get to it. Um, you can actually just, go, in addition to the actual example, the full example, this URL is also one that you could go to to just get this code immediately. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to say knn.load. So what I could do is in the setup function, right, what I could actually do is have it load that file. Um, so, but that file needs to be part of my uh, P5 sketch. So I'm going to go here under add file. Then I'm going to go, whoops. Then I'm going to grab catsdogs.json and upload it. So you can see now my project has sketch.js, which is my JavaScript code, index.html, which is the HTML code. It has that version of the ML5 library. And then now it has catsdogs.json. So what I could do now also when the program starts is have it load um, cats. Oh, I'm, I don't know what. The, I think I'm supposed to do it like this, catsdogs.json. I always forget. I think um, in JavaScript, the standard way to say something is in the local directory is this. We're going to find out if this works. Then I can give that a callback. Uh, I'm just going to say um, knn loaded. And um, I'm going to write another function, function knn loaded. And then here also, by the way, I could say, now I could say started is true. And I could start classifying. Actually, Immediately. The directory is actually I know. I, I that's what I always thought too. And then there's some weird. Let's let's see if it works this way. I want it to work this way. Let's try it this way. So I'm pretty sure. Oops. Um, I don't know why it just went away. Cats, dogs, JSON. Uh, KNN loaded. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to add that again. K and N loaded. I, I, this bothers me that it's capital, so I'm going to make it lowercase for no reason other than my own neuroticism. And then I also could say here, started equals true, and uh, get the classification process started by calling classify. All right, let's see. Let's see if it loads that. Mm. Model. Oh, guess what? Yes. Ah, interesting. For, okay, first of all, let's double check to make sure that load is actually the right. Maybe, maybe you, maybe you, uh, maybe dot slash is actually required. It might be required. Also, I might have to wait for mobile net to load before I can load it, but let's, let's see. Um, I shouldn't have to, though. Let's look at this example code just to see, because uh, it's, um, Load, load my knn is the name of the function in the example. It does have it here. Update, yeah. So let's try that. So I think this, this is a little bit of weirdness that I think we have to iron out. Cats, dogs, JSON. Let's try this. Hmm. Oh, whoops. Why is this here? That's bad. This was supposed to go here. No wonder. I, I put this in the wrong place. OK. OK. Ready? Ah, there's been a problem loading the file. That's a good sign. I mean, it's not a good sign, but ah, OK. I wonder if, oh, whoops. No, 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 no. I need to get, I need to call infer. I oh, forgot that. I, this, by the way, I've, usually if I'm like live streaming, once I get past the two hour mark, my I, brain starts shut down and I just continuously make mistakes. And I, apparently I hit that now. I mean, I probably hit that like a half an hour ago, but definitely hitting it now. Um, okay, so I need the features. I need to classify something. So, and I should probably put that in its own function, like start classification, but let's, 
Let's try this. And here we go. There we go, cat. Dog, okay. So now I've loaded the model. This is, by the way, now a finished, completely finished version of what I wanted to show you. Let's review, let's, I want to just like, people are probably trying to catch up and get this working, but let me, let me review all these steps. I think that'll be useful. And I will, uh, by the way, I actually something really important to show you. I want, actually I have a, I, I. So, okay, so what are the steps? Okay, hold on one second, son. Okay, the steps are load mobile net. That's the first step. The second step is create KNN classifier. Okay, that's here. Now there's an optional third step, which is load previous training data. Because I can continue to train, by the way, this, these, don't, these aren't mutually exclusive. I could start with no training images and add training images, or I can load training data and add more training data. But so this is really like optional, I'll put it in parentheses here, which is not that distinguishing from the circle. Load the previous, so that's what we're seeing here. So let me put comments in here, right? This is really, I mean, I, I'm skipping create video, but load mobile net. This is step one. Step two, create KNN classifier. And then this is optional, load pre, load existing, or like existing training data. Optional, okay. So then, the other steps in no particular order are Add example. This adds new training data. So that's what's happening down here. Add new training data. And then the other step is classify. <coughs> And that is, so this step four. Yes. Yes. Now, if you stop and start again, unless you save your file and re-upload it, you won't have those. But yeah. And so, by the way, this is the awkwardness of saving the file, having to go to your downloads directory, and then having to copy and paste it back, uh, upload it back in the P5 web editor, is, is a problem that exists only because we are doing client-side programming only, but if we were writing, say, like a Node.js server or wrote our own server, we could have the file save as the program's running and reload automatically. But with just client-side, without writing our own server code, we can't manage the fi the, a, a, a file system for a user. And we're the sort of, we're the creator of the P5 sketch and the user, but so the, our only option is to, is to, to run all the training, download it to our downloads directory, and then manually copy the file into the sketch. But that's perfectly reasonable if what you want to do is like calibrate a model for an in installation. You just you might and I, what I might recommend is actually having two separate sketches: one that's like doing all the training and saving the file, and another sketch that just like runs the model. Or unless you're doing something else, but. <laughs> Right, right. Oh, you could, like, yes. There's no reason why. What's in that model.json file is just data that could easily go to, like, a database as a service, like Firebase. And there's so many ways. You could put it in a Google Sheet if you wanted to. There's so many ways you could save the k &M data. Okay. Um, so what I, what I do want to show you here is, let's see if this is actually still working. Cat. Dog. Oh, let me finish adding the comments, sorry. Um, so four is training data, and then um, uh, five is uh, classify, which is here and also um, here. 
and uh, here. That's the last step. Now I want to show you something. Let's start over. Let's run this. And cat dog. It's still working. I'm going to swivel this around. Maybe nobody wants to be on camera. I'll swivel it this way. Ah, okay. I'll just swivel it over here. <laughs> okay. Now, if I go out of the frame, eh, it's still it's still actually getting it. It so amazingly, this is still working. But what I wanted to point out to you is that um, interesting. It's like one of the things that's easy to what I'm attempting to point out to you now is that I basically could break it by turning, moving what the camera's seeing is the background. Because what you have to remember is it's not just, it's not actually learning what I look like in particular. It's just learning what I look like and what the background looks like and then comparing new images to either of those. So if I have a new background, then it might suddenly the results are going to be different. Now the, the thing is, the, the thing is it actually is kind of still working anyway because it's always trying to make a best guess. And guess what? Me standing in front of this background is more similar to just a background um, that, um, uh, you know, same thing with this here. So it's similar enough, even though it was trained with about this behind me. You could ask the, uh, yeah, and we could look at the, the confidence too, yeah. We could put that, we could output that, and that would be a useful thing to output. Um, but this is something that's important to, to remember that um, you know, if you start trying to train it on objects, like the, what the background is also plays a, a pretty significant role. The other thing is mobile net, like if, um, if I were to, um, let's, let's actually, let me not load the, I want to sh show you one more thing. I'm not going to load the existing one. And I'm going to uh, do something totally silly. Yeah, draw yourself. Yeah, I'm really determined to do to, to do this demonstration. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to erase this. Maybe you're going to train it with the screen of the code. Yeah. No, you'll you'll see what I'm going to do. Here we go. I'm going to draw a cat. Okay, and now <laughs> this is my cat. I'm giving it a bunch of cats. Yeah, I should move it a little bit. Oh, I should move this a little bit. This is this is a very flawed demonstration. But <laughs> now I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to draw. Oh boy. Uh, uh, okay, wait, I don't can't draw a dog. <laughs> do you want to draw a dog for us, Simon? Can, can I do it? I, yeah. I, I didn't know if I can do it still. This, by the way, I'm, what I'm trying to do is show you something that's not going to work at all. That's pretty good. Uh, I know. <laughs> Here, Simon, I will finish your, your, your dog for you. Um, so just to, just to make it somewhat different, this is probably like looking more like a monkey or something, but um, this is going to be the dog. Okay. So now, <laughs> all right, look, you can see it's like, Let's start with the cat. <laughs> yeah. All right, that, uh, the, the point is this is not, you know, the, one of the issues here is there's only two. It's got a 50% chance of getting it right. <laughs> and I think I gave it a lot more cat images. Now that now it so, I, so. <laughs> See, still a cat. I don't remember what our dog looked like. Yeah. But the, the point is, <laughs> that's like a weird frog. The point of what I'm saying is, MobileNet, because we're doing, 
what I'm trying, what I'm, the point of, that took way too long for the point I'm trying to demonstrate, but the point that I'm trying to demonstrate is that mobile net was trained on photographic imagery. It wasn't, so it actually just thinks every drawing is basically a drawing. Now, I, or it probably thinks it's a web page drawing. I don't know what, what, what the features, it's not going to be able to extract unique features for different line drawings. Those all look like the same category to it. So that's not going to work. But photographic imagery that's full of color and shape and like things that we see in the real world, it's going to be able to somewhat distinguish that in a way that's meaningful. So if you wanted, um, you know, there's a bunch of projects like Gene Kogan's uh, Doodle Classifier is a, um, like this is not a magical solution that works for everything. And so this particular project, which recognizes drawings, is not using transfer learning in KNN and MobileNet. It's actually training an entire model of, from scratch off of a massive database of drawings. I've used these a lot. If you have seen the videos, the quick draw uh, data set. So that's, the, the, that's one thing that I wanted to mention is that like we are, we are, we have the, the, our ability to do this, and let me, um, let me load it back to something that was kind of like working. Um, our ability to have this work is limited by the kind of data that I show it. And I'll, I'll show you another, just to show you the, the uh, let's just to go to this particular, this is the uh, example that Yuning made. Let's try to actually, I think rock, paper, scissors won't actually work super well. So let's try this. So I'm gonna uh, put my hand, this is rock. I'm gonna give it a lot of rock examples. I'm gonna move my hand all the way around just to like give it lots of examples. Now paper, try to make this fairly distinguished. Paper, and then scissors. <laughs> Uh, start predicting. Okay, rock. You can see that it's getting it wrong a lot of the time. Paper. Wow, it really got it. It's really good at doing paper. Scissors. Scissors. So maybe I yeah. Maybe I need more training data. But the thing is, the quality of these images is kind of the same. It's sort of like. You know, the neural network ends up seeing like, ooh, it's this blob of a person with their hand somewhere kind of thing. I mean, it's not, it doesn't think in those terms, it's all just numbers. But the, the difference, what those logits are, what the features are between this and this are, are probably not super significant. So yeah, it's good. Human, yeah. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Yes, yes. It's fine to find it. That's actually, that's, so that would be a fun project to make would actually be like a, a thing that just plays against you but always always wins. Um, and certainly, this would probably fail if I were to move the, fail, it'd be much worse if I were to move the computer over to there and have people with different hand sizes and skin colors um, work with the system. So there's so many inherent limitations to what we think of as like, you know, robots are gonna take over and we'll all be, you know, that's, we've got a ways to go because it, it, it really is, it's, can't play, it can't be just a rock, paper, scissors game. I probably could if we were to have that Okay, I'm gonna go back to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to feel somewhat successful by going back to this example and stepping out and seeing it say body. Does anybody have any questions about this? No, I, I, I think I understand. Okay, so actually I just calculated something. So basically, uh, I, just, I just want to, uh, basically, uh, every, basically, I, I think I know something that is that <laughs> um, it turns out that I, th I think I think I now know what the uh, what the I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> so basically, uh, what I wanted to say is what I wanted to say is that basically, right, there are 256 grayscale values. <laughs> so, so let's start with that. Then, there are, there, there's RGB color, which is, which, uh, all right, so that's 256 cubed. Cubed, yes. But then there's a, but then the image is 256. 256 by 256. Uh, so that has, so it's. 256 to the fifth power. That's what you were saying before. No, but that's, I, I, 
I 256 know. cubed is the number of colors per pixel. Actually, no. That, I, I found huh? a mistake in there. Uh, I found a mistake in there. Because it turns out that, all right, so basically, 256 cubed, that, uh, well, how many bits is that? So 256 is 2 to the 8. Yes. All right, so that's actually a butt. That's a butt. <laughs> All right, and then so the, <laughs> but then this all to the power of <laughs> hang on, so that's actually right because there's pixels and there's uh, how many pixels are there? Two hundred and fifty-six square. Oh, uh, oh, but this has to be cubed, right? And then, and then square. No, not square. It's then to the power of two hundred. 56, so that's to the power of, <laughs> I'm just gonna do the two to the eight to play again. That's the total right. number of possible 256 by 256. Yeah, yeah. 256, <laughs> wait, two, 256 cubed to the power of 256 squared. Uh, what, what so, so how many bits is that? <laughs> so how many bits is that? So well, let's find out. So that's 2 to the 8. All right, so how many bits is that? All right, so that's already 8 bits. Cubed, so that's another 3 bits. So, so we got to multiply this by 3. And then this is another... Well, then actually, I just got to... I, I just got to raise this to the power of... Hang on, so this is... Uh, uh, no, this is just times. Yeah. And then, hang on. So it's times, wait. Right, so basically they're pixels there, but then if you, that's multiply by another 256 squared. Because, right, because mm -hmm. they're 256 pixels, so this is multiplied by another 256 squared. I calculated that. Simon, will you make, will you make a video on this when you get back home to well, your home? Well, <laughs> so yes, we but actually, I just wanted to notice <laughs> something. Uh, I just wanted to notice something. I just, I, I'm going to make a video on this later, but actually, I'm going to... I'm going to just show you this. So how many bits is that? That is 157-2864. That's the size of it. So, and 2 to the power of that, that's how many possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and, and which, and so which is... It, it's actually really phenomenal because we don't think about the scale of the possibility of, you know, we work with images so often, and it just seems so sort of like crazy how many possibilities there are, but oh, this, no. the scale of these numbers are just unimaginable. I can't even like think in those sizes, right? Oh, no. If we were to actually write that number out. Yeah, you would need You would need like a fancy only, calculator and, and to and actually be able to do only, that. Uh, there's only, there's uh, only uh, one thing I want to mention. Actually, the, the the size of an image is normally something uh, much smaller than as many bits, right? So right. much smaller. The reason why is that's, because that's the world of, of every possible image that you could ever make in the entire universe. Yeah, but actually So just one of those is a much smaller amount. No, no, actually no, that's not what I'm saying. The Im the image is actually the, that means that an image has to be, uh, the, the size of the image has to be about this many bits. But it's actually much smaller. Why? Because actually uh, there is, it's something called a compression algorithm. Ah, okay. The, uh, the idea is that, uh, the idea being that uh, one little <laughs> groups of pixels, like this group of pixels and this group of pixels, are very kind of similar to each other. And so and so you only really have to record this color and right. this color. Right. And so basically and, and and so that compresses the image. Right. And in a way the feature extractor 
is something like a compressor because it's taking the larger image and converting it down into a thousand numbers. And in fact, you know, JPEG, all these JPEG compression and other compression algorithms are essentially trying to like find smaller amounts. But then when you go to redisplay the image, it's decompressing it so you can see all those pixels. You, you wouldn't really be able, you can't, the neural network doesn't really work so nicely in reverse. But when you see all of those kinds of things that people are uh, publishing about um, like uh, um, neural networks that are sort of dreaming or generating images, in a way that is the backwards process. So uh, if you, if we, with this thing that we started with, if you take, you take the full image and you boil it down to a thousand numbers, well, could you run that algorithm in reverse? Start with some random amount, random set of numbers, and get and get an image out of that. And that's what, that's deep, that's like a de decompression. And that's what when you see a lot of these fancy sort of fancy videos that people are neural networks are dreaming and walking through the big GAN space. Space we've seen this sort of like big GAN model, that's a generative adversarial networks. I mean, I've skipped a, a, a hundred thousand probably steps in between what we're doing today and that, but this is really the idea. It's super interesting. I think it's, I, I think actually, you know, I, I think actually it's, only, it's actually showing the compressed image. I think it's actually showing the compressed mm -hmm. image. Well, we're we're seeing, you know, so I, you know, I think we could we could probably go on with this discussion for a very very long time because it's an interesting question. Like, are we seeing? Because, but but in essence, we have to view all of the. We are. You're right that we are seeing the compressed image, but there's still a full pixel being drawn for every location. But but I, but but it is a good point, and I think but we could argue it for a long time. But it isn't showing the compressed image is like a totally random image. Right. What it can't compress an image is right. if something like a totally random image, right. which is not because it can't an image find a similarity. Yeah. And so and so you normally actually see compressed images. So does anybody? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Did I mention the same kind of principle? Or yeah. Like a book, which you want to summarize. Yes. Getting right. Books, or yes. like a video, and yes. then make a, yes. a short video. Yes. So that's what there's, you know, most machine learning models, something I was working with recently is called the universal sentence encoder. When you hear that, what is that, what could that possibly mean? Well, the universal sentence encoder is a particular machine learning model that takes a string of text and converts that into numbers. So you could actually figure out, well, it's trying to boil down the essence of what that text is into a set of numbers. And so then you could do things like say like, oh, are these two sentences similar or not? Because you can always measure the similarity of numbers by distance, by distance in some dimensional space. So this, is, this process is, you're absolutely right, music, sound, images, text, Anything that's data that we, can, that we can turn into data, that we can turn into numbers, we can pass it through a machine learning system to detect features. This, again, look, this isn't magic. The universal sentence encoder only exists because it, you know, some researchers, most likely at Google, <laughs> happen to be able to train this model on some massive amount of text. This is a good they example. This yeah. is a, a summary of the publication. Yes. Which means like it's a ten paper, ten yes. page paper, and uh, this has been written by a human. Yes. Maybe someday we'll <laughs> computer generate it. Right. Thing. Oh, the summary. Exactly. Yeah. And we can base with yeah. millions of publications. Yeah. So, uh, um, yes. Uh, is there uh, like a collision uh, for the numbers of dimension for uh, the the things we pass to a data set? Like, uh, does a data set has to uh, object with the same yes. So this is a hidden really now there are there are countless variations on all of these different <laughs> techniques and algorithms, but at its core, um, this is the idea of a shape. If you if you start to read into like more of the documentation of TensorFlow.js or TensorFlow or other machine learning models, you'll 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 see this idea of uh, a shape. So for example, image classification. We're taking this image, the webcam image is 320 by 240, and sending it into MobileNet. Well, I don't remember what it is exactly, but MobileNet actually only accepts input data that is, I can't remember what it is, but it's some weird dimension like this, 224 by 224. So I don't remember whether it's ML5 or TensorFlow.js, but somewhere before it's actually passed in there, that image has been resized. 
Um, so the, uh, the way a sort of standard, typical neural network system works, um, this is different than a neural network that's um, recurrent, that's designed for sequential data, which is a sort of different discussion, is the, the inputs are fixed. So weird things happen like with, um, uh, with the, like a sentence, like a sentence is some arbitrary number of words. So how is that boiled down into a fixed amount? Well, read the paper and they'll, they'll explain how they did that. But it's typically done, there's like each word is probably uh, looked up in a dictionary and then assigned some other number that's then repackaged in another array. There's, you know, uh, elaborate techniques for like fitting the data into um, a particular uh, sub dimension. But that is different than if you've heard of something, this is also in ML5, it's called a recurrent neural network, um, which is a neural network that's trained on sequences or can generate sequences. That's really useful for data that is of, of not fixed dimension. And what I mean by that is just, to, I mean, this is, you know, certainly merits more than uh, two minutes of discussion. But if we have the image classification example, Right, where it has some fixed number of inputs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is like a four by two image. Which, you know, it could be eight pixel values that goes in and gives us you know, cat or dog. So any, any arbitrary image would have to be resized to this very tiny dimension before going into this particular system. <coughs> a recurrent neural network, that, a classic example is like, you know, hello, comma, my name is. The way a recurrent neural, recurrent neural network works is it feeds in one character at a time. So H, the input is a single character, and the output, the idea is trying to guess the next element of the sequence, and then that is fed back in recursively. So it's able to do something one element at a time. So you can basically train it to, by saying like, hey, I'm gonna give you an H, you're supposed to get an E next. It's gonna make a guess, which is probably gonna be incorrect. It's gonna tweak its dials, and then it's gonna feed the E back in, and then it's gonna say like, okay, well I'm gonna, are you supposed to get an L next? So it's gonna train itself based on the sequence, and then it can generate things one at a time. And so examples of this that I've done, have videos about is like recently like a model called Sketch RNN, because a drawing is a sequence. So can try to predict where you're going to go next based on the drawing path. So an infinite amount of possibilities here. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Ah, yes. Yeah, so this is a great question, and um, so you, the, the short answer is no, in the sense that um, ML5 is dependent entirely dependent on uh, TensorFlow.js and the work that the TensorFlow.js team did is very, to make it work, is very specific to JavaScript, the browser, and WebGL. So what's kind of missing from this discussion is all of this can happen now in the browser at uh, very efficiently because of WebGL, which is using your computer's graphics card to do all these matrix math calculations that, you know, graphics cards were designed to do all those calculations to, to render graphics, but it turns out those same kind of calculations the field of linear algebra, matrix math, that drives a lot of computer graphics, also drives these machine learning algorithms. So their implementation is um, entirely, uh, uh, it, it, and, and ML5 is entirely like focused on JavaScript and WebGL. That said, it would be technically possible to d make a port of ML5 to processing by building on top of Java bindings for reg regular TensorFlow. So the original TensorFlow library is, is, is C++, is written in C++. Most people interact with it through a language called Python um, because that's you know, the sort of language of the data science world. And so you're kinda, you can control TensorFlow from Python, basically. Execute TensorFlow machine learning uh, uh, um, operations from Python. You can also can do those from Java, I'm pretty sure. It's just, this is like not a thing that a lot of people know how to do. <laughs> Java bindings, TensorFlow. And um, so, 
Look at this, install TensorFlow for Java. So in theory, you could make, it's over here, you could make a, uh, you could sort of wrap TensorFlow and put some niceties around it in processing the same way. The, um, but no one has um, done that. Anybody, if anybody wants to do that, you know, send me a message on Twitter or something, because I'll, I'll, I'll be there, I'm just gonna like cheer the whole time. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, they're more, um, you know, it's, it's a weird sort of thing, because I don't, I, don't, I, I don't have a good, World, I don't have, I think, an accurate worldview um, in the sense that if you, I think people are using Java and Java is used in industry and in, in education, a huge amount. But in the world that I kind of walk through, that's creative coding, education, uh, art school, um, there are so many more people now invested in learning JavaScript and contributing to JavaScript. So I think it's, it's harder to find contributors to uh, processing Java than it is to uh, JavaScript libraries these days. From, but I don't know if that's really true in a sort of global sense or just in the sort of small little circles that I operate in and I'm not reaching out to the right people or communities. Other questions? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Yes, Simon. One more question from Simon. Or is this more, you are, are you going to talk to us about how many pixels no, no, are in no, an no, image no, again? No, 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 no. <laughs> Because this is rather, you really should make a video about so that. You, I will make a video about that when I get back. Oh, I just want to show you one more kind of cool uh, little. So let, let me pause you for a second because I want I want to hear about this, but I think also we're reaching the time where maybe if people want, if we want to like break out and like just hang out here for a little bit, trying to work with these examples, and we can also have like some side discussions. So hold, hold that thought for like one more minute. Can you do that, Simon? Okay. Okay. Um, so what what I want to do is, um, let, so let me just stop here with this, let me, let me stop here with this example. So um, I'm going to, if, if it isn't already, what I'll do in a moment is I'll take this URL and put it as a link right here. Maybe it's here already. Work in progress sketch. Look, it's there already. And so, you know, I'm certainly, I'm gonna be hanging out here for at least another hour. I don't, I don't know what the, you know, this was like a, a free event. I don't, I don't know what time Latank Le closes down, but you, you're all obviously welcome to leave at any time. No one's held captive here. Um, but what I would be interesting to me is if people can take this example and play with it, whether that's just like trying to train their own model with some objects you find running around, whether you want to hook it into something else you've already been working on. People want to hang out here for another hour or so and work on stuff. Um, I can float around and answer some questions. Um, if you didn't get a sticker, there's still, look how many stickers are left. Maybe you're not a sticker person, which is totally understandable. <laughs> you can come and take some coding train stickers. I know there's some treats that home, home baked and also some that Pierre brought from a, a vegan place nearby. Um, so, um, so maybe we can just hang out here for another hour and work on stuff and I can answer questions. Um, and that, does that sound good? Okay, um, so I'm gonna, for that purpose, I'm gonna shut down the live stream. All right. And then Simon, I'm gonna start with you to hear about this thing that you wanna tell me. But first let me shut down the live stream. And then, so, and then we'll just, so we'll, we'll make this an official moment. How do I do this? Okay, I'm gonna go here. Uh, no, we're like, they're, they're, let, let's check in on the live stream for a second. Okay, uh, Java seems good. Okay, um, okay, stop streaming. Okay, this has been longer than an hour and a half. That time is not accurate, okay. All right, I'm feeling very nervous about clicking this button. Okay, goodbye everybody watching this live. If we make, maybe what we'll do also, before I kick stop there and get to a second, what we'll do is um, if people make stuff from today, maybe we can come up with a way of aggregating that. Um, and you know, certainly that just having people add links to things you made from that GitHub readme would be a start, but certainly if people have other ideas. Um, hashtag the tank, the coding tank. Is that like a thing? Like a tank is like a train. How do you say, how do you say, never mind. Okay, I'll, I'll get my French lessons later. Okay, I'm gonna hit stop streaming. Thank you. Everybody.